Bhartika, are you there? Yeah, please just uh, say a few words about her and then we can start. Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Self Discovery 1.0 of Mr. Jayshree Ganeshan. Uh, she's founder and CEO of IBM Academy. Uh, she's a lady who's uh, having more than 33 years of uh, work experience and touched many lives. I think more than 80,000 lives she has already touched. I, personally, if you talk about me, I'm very much uh, like uh, surprised or very much uh, connect, feel connected to her the way she talks and uh, let's hear directly from her her life journey and how she find gbp and what is she planning in future with gbp over to you jayshree ji thank you thank you so much Bhartika. thank you for that very warm introduction delighted to be part of the midna family and to set a context on someone you you are meeting for the first time I am all of 53, a mother of two lovely daughters, a and I have a grandchild, Mira, who is all of five. And in all three, I see myself. Very supportive parents, Mrs. Malini and Mr. Subramanian, to whom I truly offer my salutations first. And then my ever supportive husband, Ganeshan, and mom-in-law with whom I live. You will get to see much more about me as we proceed. And as I had in my intro, if you had seen that, that is, told you that I was both curious and wonderstruck when I got my genetic brain profiling done. Curiosity, of course, pumped me with questions and wonderment stumped me. I was left gaping at the precision of this report. And I was also relieved that I had worked on so many aspects, striving to bring a balance, which is what Midna is really speaking about. Wow. In today's self-discovery, you will see both perfect matches and surprise elements thanks to my life journey and experiences that helped me become what I am today. Thank you, dear Harish, for introducing me to this and replenishing my unquenchable thirst for knowledge of self. Thank you, dear Bhartika, for those sessions. Your soothing voice still rings in my ears. And Dr. Ratna Sami, with his no-nonsense style, of being both candid and caring. Respect to you, sir. Both of you have left me yearning for so much more. So yes, I. this is what I am a CEO today, if you say, have been a cultural ambassador, 33 years of experience, have done a lot of training and work with people, you know, right from students to CEOs. But, before I even get into my life story, let me flash this. Right, going for the jugular, I'll say. Flashing before you is the first part of my brain profiling. For those who already understand this, I am doing this first so you can quickly relate to my life choices and where it comes from. For the others who are new to brain profiling, I shall take you through easily understandable snippets of my story. My unique ID is A1, A1, D2, X, D3, C1, D3, C3, C1, A1, A1. Effective in my prefrontal execution and occipital visual lobes. Cognitive in all my other lobes, three double loops and an X in my frontal lobe. My prefrontal energy is reasonable, but not my strength looks like it. And my adaptiveness is reasonable too. It is expected that I might have difficulty controlling my emotions or have emotional outbursts, limited creative ability and leadership qualities. Lesser on in intuition and visualization. So this is what is expected, okay? My frontal thoughts associated with reasoning, logical thinking, linguistic function, visual spatial imagination, idea and conceptualization is at a decent 69, but with lesser adaptiveness. The expectation is not very high here though. But interestingly, with cognitive D2 and D3 and a special X in the left lobe, there are surprises in store. Many who knew me as a child to many who know me now see a newness in me each time they meet me. I am not too surprised, but I am surprised when they are surprised. Temporal, auditory, 
as the highest energy and high adaptiveness, you can expect me to be a great listener with a strong ability to learn language, with a strong ability to control auditory and music appreciation. This is followed by my parietal kinesthetic. It is high on energy, but low on adaptiveness. You can expect me to be more adept at movement, dance, with an ability to process information through my senses. And many are often surprised that I'm not an ace dancer, classical dance performer, which they expected I would be. Perhaps that is because of my low adaptiveness here. My lowest being occipital in energy, but high in adaptiveness, my strength again could be in receiving information from my eyes, reading comprehension, visual and image appreciation ability. My, when you come to my primary school potential, it is highest with lower adaptiveness, however. Secondary is slightly lower with lower adaptiveness too. This could mean I needed a conducive environment in school and college, being effective in both frontal and occipital lobes. I did perform exceptionally well in school, not so great in college, but today I understand after the genetic brain profiling that what I was made for and what I got was starkly different. But later on in university, I could be a self learner as my high adaptiveness shows, indicating my ability to seek self learning and self regulated learning. I did surprise many step by step. Now, let us just let me now introduce you to the young child, Jayashree. Play along was my motto. With an extremely conducive environment in Hyderabad, my families in the neighborhood, I have had the happiest childhood. It is play, I would always believe, not properness. It is the brainstem of creative life. No play, no life. Be good, no life. Sit still, no life. This is exactly what I used to believe and live by. And the impulse to play is an instinct for me. And even today, in the way I work, I make everything a game. No matter how abstract the concept is. One of my USP today is that. Just on it. Musti bhari. Hava jo chali, masti bhari hava jo chali, khil khil gai ye dil ki kali, man ki kali mein hai kal bani, unko to bulao, oh, 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 oh. No, 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 I'm not going to take you into the song for much longer. I just wanted to give you a taste of what my childhood always was. My childhood best friend is this little velvet insect, Birba Bhutti. I used to collect them from the grounds. The little seeds I would pick to munch on. Badam fruits I would pick from the ground and munch on. Clearly all sensory, right? Till date, I learn all my life lessons from childhood memory. So every sense of touch and feel and what I sensed did make a big difference to me. But yes, a bit of a touche, a happy turtle, both in water and land, both in school and home, but very quick to take offense and pick fights over callous remarks, especially if it borders on discrimination. I would bottle up and become hard to penetrate. Just look at that little turtle you know, peeping in from under the shell. That is exactly how I was. But if you turn me around and tickle me a bit, a little smile, Take me out in the open. That's it. I'm back to my very happy, cheerful form again. I can never carry a grudge. I will let nothing disturb my general cheerful nature. So I'm constantly working to make everybody around me cheerful. So I remain cheerful. That is from my A1, A1 in the prefrontal and occipital, I guess. However, I could never take anything imposed upon me without questioning. And if I'm not convinced and it was not explained to me, I feel now my D3s and C3s are showing up. 
If somebody tells me, go walk to the temple, place your book in front of Hayagriva before the exams and you'll get a very good score. No way. I wouldn't resist it completely. Until today, I resist it if astrology is thrown at my face without an explanation. The next instant, questions such as these would pop up. Why does the god of knowledge have the head of a horse? Should we study the horse a bit more? Our ancestors are definitely not stupid. They've churned up such amazing things. What could be the meaning behind the shloka? And then I would crack it. A very unique answer that till today helps me convince many on ancient practices. If you really want to carry forward this discussion on Hayagriva with me, definitely call me on my personal number. You have a surprise in store for you. Where is all this coming from? Born with higher sensory memory, I surely have difficulty remembering things for long. Even which simply means similar sensory thing also helps me forget the hurt and the angst, etc. Even rehearsals don't help me remember. But my ability to cut off all other noises and focus on one aspect of the environment while ignoring all the others turns out to be my strength. My long-term memory is good too. If you can see, it is a 33.31, not as much as my sensory memory, perhaps. So the process of consolidation, meaningful associations, they all facilitate my long-term memory. If you notice here, my echoic memory is very high, which means I remember everything someone has told me. Sorry about that. Okay. My echoic memory is highest, which means I remember everything someone has told me years later too. A disadvantage is if I take into nitpicking or wallowing in self-pity, this can be a very, very big disadvantage. Fortunately for me, this is a strength too, because I remember poignant statements made by my mentors, by revolutionary leaders very strongly. I even as I was preparing for this, I was reminded of a very powerful uh, quote from Vemana's Kavita, just like Kabir, you know, does his Doha. Vemana does it in Telugu and I was brought up in Hyderabad, so my Telugu is pretty strong. And this is what it reads. I was just recalling it spur of the moment, even as I was preparing this. Uppu kappu rambu, nokka polika nundu, chuda juda ruchula jada veru, purushulandu punya purushulu vereya, vishwadhabi rama vinuravema. It simply means that everyone looks alike. But to perceive the difference between a normal human being and a blessed one, you need to be with them and observe them very closely. The examples such as these crop up in my mind and they're like, they just leave an indelible impression. And it is the right brain intuitive and right brain sensory that seems to be working here now, even when I am quoting this. So writing, blogging, oration, performing arts, these seem to be my strength. Let's see me growing up and evolving into an adult to check if all that is shown here is bang on. So shall we go deeper into my life journey? Are you guys okay with that? So here you are. My life journey on TikTok. Okay. I have just marked them in six steps. One, the live student, wife, mother, an unconventional teacher then. Went on to become a cultural ambassador, a senior consultant, an entrepreneur, and a life coach. Now let's see how my subject preferences have also played on my life and how it's helped me evolve. Interest is pretty high in biology, if you notice, though it is higher still in vocational commerce and humanities. Abstract sequential thinker. I'm good at formulating theory. Research suits me well. Structured learning suits me. And... Often we kind of people succeed well in university. Concrete random thinker need concrete experiences. 
and divergent thinkers excel at brainstorming, problem solving, and are quite innovative. They work equally well in groups and individually. We cannot be accommodated in educational institutions and need open-ended and experiential learning experiences. Now, this is so fascinating. This is what made me an unconventional teacher when in school. As a student, these are my other interests, right? So see, as a student from 15 to 35 years, I'm enthusiastic, a first venture, high scorer, drama artist, debater, become a wife at 19 and a mother at 20. You would think that could be very stiff, could be very difficult to proceed with education, etc. But I was very strong on teaching as a choice of career. That is also because of some spiritual masters that I had even then. As a teacher, passionate, loving, adoring kids, being adored in return, pioneer in creating English language labs in my school, extremely different in the way I held drama, etc. So I used to attract students very easily. A master's in biology, followed by English and education. So you can see what has happened, right? Interest was in biology, I did it, but that was not my strong ability area. Though I was a great teacher, I gravitated towards language and humanities and so education and known for unconventional ways to teach. Then came the game changer in my life. At the age of 34, Art of Living, Sudarshan Kriya. I strongly believed in and so never indulged in discussing people. I never, never enjoyed discussing people. I love discussing with people, but not discussing people. Hated gossip. Never made problem my focal point. It was always, I was always into ideas because perhaps problems would make me very uncomfortable. Maybe it would upset my gut too. And so I would quickly be seeking solutions for the problems. Always into ideas. And Art of Living made me look deeper into myself. Now, very interesting. When Ratnaji was doing my reading, he said, if you are more into looking at yourself, you are handing over so much as a team player to others, Jayashree, but if you are able to spend more time with yourself, with nature and reflecting more on yourself, it will be a game changer for you. And I was very, very surprised when I heard that. And I also know where the change came from. All thanks to my Guru Sri Sri Ravi Shankar addressed all the pain points that made me shy away because if there was even the slightest thing of antipathy, I used to shut down the shop and move forward lest I hurt somebody else. Or I used to pull on with stubborn stance, but it would still hurt me a lot. So that is something that I was able to recover from. I retraced the from the shy from the shying away attitude to get into action. So otherwise, it would have been fright and flight mode for me for almost everything. I will not say I have overcome that completely, but it is definitely work in progress and I'm well aware of what is actually happening. From a conventional housewife and a school teacher, I'll be a little different and completely in love with both my roles. Thanks to Mrs. Y.G. Parthasarathy, again, a mentor I'll never forget, speaking the language of love and articulating my first 35-page resume. I was one among the three chosen from 70,000 participants to represent the country in Japan as a cultural ambassador. This was definitely a turning point in my life because coming from a very conventional family, very pampered, very protected, but both my parents and my husband, it was very difficult for me to break barriers. Though I knew myself, it was very difficult to convince them to let me go and be myself. But that was something that I could do. Even here, I was chosen by the government to have leaders from across the country to come and observe my classes as I taught English without translating it into Japanese and the students still understood it. So I was breaking conventions here. Once having broken that, I went on to break many, many more. I traveled the length and breadth of the country working with a firm that promoted educational research. 
ever thankful to Chitra Ravi from Easy Vidya. This is where I discovered my unique ability. And this was again the second turning point in my life. A view, I was able to view a problem from all 360 degrees. So right from the sales personnel to the marketing to the educational development would come to me and I was called the SOS member in the organization. And they would often wonder how I was able to look at certain uh, realms, you know, which are very hidden. They are not out there. They are not out there as behavior, but it is something that is deep lying inside. And once I would touch that, I was able to convince my clients to take forward a curriculum, etc. So this is where I was able to rediscover my ability because here was a visionary leader who saw this trend and she put members with me and made me the head of the solution analyst team and said, record everything that Jayshri is saying. In the process of actually recording everything that I was doing, I began to introspect way deeper and I became a solution analyst. And again, Dr. Ratnaswamy actually took me by surprise when he said, Jayshri, there is one 360 degree ability that I can see here. And I simply smiled because this is something that was recognized once again, thanks to a conducive environment. Now, given to myself or left to myself, I might not have been in a position to discover that. So the conducive environment in Easy Vidya, the situations and the challenges that we were faced with were golden opportunities to help me realize that. So again, strongly the A1A1 is speaking up here. Updating myself then with Western psychology on one side, an Eastern text from Art of Living. I was soon able to perceive my Ikigai. And interestingly, I have been to Okinawa. So I have actually seen people enjoying every little thing that they do. And basically being a person who does enjoy, I, I frankly enjoy everything that I do. And I become pretty emotional, pretty expressive about it too. So I was in Okinawa and I, I was trying to find out, you know, what is it that helps them be very happy about every small thing that they do. And I was introduced to the term Ikigai then. But it is during this process, because, you know, having a book and having the knowledge of the book is way different from actually applying it in your life. So I was soon able to discover my Ikigai and just look at what happened. I'm just going to share with you a couple of insights that I had. What do I love? I love discussing philosophy and I love traveling. But if I do just that, I will have delight, but I will have no wealth. So can I continue doing that? Definitely not. Somebody or the other will stop me. What am I good at? Teaching concepts. Well, everybody knows that. And I was earning pretty well for that too. But if I keep doing that, I might have satisfaction, but I might still feel useless. Trust me, I did. Even if I was called a great teacher, even if I was adored, even if I was very adoring, I still felt very useless at a particular point of time. What can I be paid for? Administration. Yes, and I was very good at it. All the ISO certifications that we got in the school, I was at the helm of it all. But if I do just that, I might be comfortable, but I might feel empty. And what does the world need? For me, equal opportunities and equanimity is what I felt the world needs. I might feel very excited, but complacent and uncertainty with no way ahead, right? So I became, if I had just account to one of them at a time, I had to bring it all together. I became an entrepreneur and gradually in four years, a life coach. What pains you most becomes a solution too. I began building my business through reference. And this is how I started realizing my Ikigai. In the next two or three slides, you'll actually see how I've realized my Ikigai and how I've been able to articulate it too. So I'm now an entrepreneur and I'm now a life coach, right? And interestingly, as a life coach, I'm building business through referrals. Again, I am only part of teams which are giving teams. You will understand why I am made that way. And as an entrepreneur too, it is always the other person's pain that comes to me first. And I am always thinking of creating solutions for another person's pain. You will soon understand why I'm made that way too. 
So here I wanted to share with you a little story, a very touching story, a story of pain and a monk. So there is a psychiatrist, a young guy who's a psychiatrist, and he actually goes on to do his internship in a hospital. And out there at the hospital, the, uh, the, he, is, he sees a guy who is in pain, who's crying all day through. So he goes up to the doctors and says, this is the case I wish to take up because this is really moving me. The doctors, they fused. They said, no, that's too tough a case for an internship. Why don't you try out something much simpler and easier? So he said, okay, but he stepped out, but he was not quite comfortable. He met a monk on the way and he told the monk, I'm in so much pain looking at that person. I want to treat that person. I want to work on his case, but they're not letting me. What should I do? So the monk just looked at him and said, keep the pain with you. Now this guy was surprised. How can a monk ask me to be in pain? He simply said, the pain is going to help you come up with so many solutions as against you working on that one person. You never know you might come up with infinite solutions. So it is what is more important is to keep the pain with you. And he then went on to describe this pain as compassion. Compassion is nothing but living with pain. Surprising. And this was something that had, again, a very deep impact on me. And I realized this is what I have been doing. Everything that hurt me used to come up as a solution. I made this story my life. Whatever gives me pain, I build solutions around them. I saw young people running away from responsibility. I built programs to focus on efforts for better results because I realized that the result-centric education is the root cause of the problem, right? All of us have observed more than many seek shortcuts. And this is only because we are focusing more on results than efforts. So it has to be efforts for better results. And I have actually come up with programs that help them focus on efforts to resolve a problem. The next pain that I felt, again, a very strong pain because I was traveling the whole country and I saw many young people who were taking up the jobs, getting well-trained, but refusing to continue to work because they did not want to travel much. So they were quitting their jobs because travel was bogging them down. Why? Because all along they've been tied indoors all their life in schools and they did not learn to travel. So I began to create educate tours to help them turn rich and healthy through the experience and take up that 70% of the jobs outside, which actually involve travel. So for me, the cartoons were so relevant. How can I become successful artist if you make me stay within the lines, says the child. And what did you come back from with from the class field trip? The kid actually has an animal in the bag. So this is what I expect people to do, learn from anything and everything around and actually be so sensitized and sensitive to your surroundings. And see, the pain is again turning into a solution. Let us see where it is coming from, okay? I was studying my RIASIC model, okay? Administrating, manufacturing, human resources, CRM at a high and very interesting. I am somebody who looks at the KRA and KPI of uh, you know, organizations and people very clearly, and then come up with CRM solutions to maintain the same. So it is something that's my pet project. And I began to do that very uh, consistently. And that is how I'm now able to work not with just schools and colleges, but also with corporates and individuals. So you can also see very realistic. Realistic is high social and artistic. That is high with an entrepreneurial suitability index of 63.33. I don't know what that number actually means to many, but for me, it is above 50. So it means it is going on to become, and it's definitely closing in on 100. So I'm sure there are a lot of other aspects we need to work on, but my entrepreneurial zeal comes from here, comes from all the learning, comes from the analysis uh, mindset of mine and also the creative, and it emerges as a solution for pain. Now look at this, see how much we are in sync, right? The What you see down here is my disk result and it says ESFJ. 
And this is something that was stunning for me on day one because it says I'm sociable, I'm caring, people-oriented, serving others to fulfill their needs. Now look at how that actually manifests in my work. That is uh, something that took me by surprise too. Here is the name of my company, okay? And I named it out in a flash. I called it iBeam Academy. I look at beam as three words. Beam is a ray of light. Beam is also that strongest structure for building that way, you know, holds all the weight. Beam is also an inner joy that you radiate. And then I connected the dots. I said, oh, it's very important for you to understand your own capacity, fall in love with yourself, nurture your ability. And then only when you work on the needs of others, will you be moving from a zone of capacity to capability. It is only when you serve the needs of others that you will beam with an inner joy and radiate an inner joy. And you can see this, this mission and vision was written close to six years back when I started my company, but you can see it very clear. And I hadn't done my DISC model then. Enabling learners from diverse backgrounds to realize their capacity, nurture their ability and capably align it to the needs of others. And where did I come up with this? When I was a teacher trainer and working with a lot of youngsters and a master trainer in traveling the country, I would see many youngsters, though very intelligent and full of spark, would fail only in the field where they couldn't connect with the need of the other person, couldn't empathize, couldn't make that quick connection to take across their point. So even if their point was very strong, very valid, they would still lose out. So that is where it came from. And clearly, what can I do for you is my life. It is ESFJ. I've really lived by that. And, and look at the business model. And you can see the outdoorsy thing of mine and the sensory learner in mine is actually making it all experiential if you see that. Right. And it says it equips learners with necessary skill, attitude and knowledge in their scope of interest. Coupled with travel, if you notice in their scope of interest, I will not do it without a need analysis. I cannot dump subjects on people. Coupled with travel elements to get connected with and resolve issues in the real world with implications in the future. That was a vision that I had created for the company, for myself and how to work around me. My programs and my modes of operandi, if you see, will speak loudly my brain. So I have learned how to learn, learn how to be, learn how to facilitate, make it work for yourself and roots to roots, which is completely about what I spoke about before, right? Culture, heritage, preserving, anything, any hack, which I feel is, it helps us evolve, help us grow. It's something I would love to prefer. I'd love to preserve. Watch and look at, right? So if you notice this, MI, and this is, MI is something I learned close to 27 years back. I cannot forget the very first workshop I attended and how I took up the lesson plans and began writing MI lesson plans and how later on, even when we, I was doing a reinvent education program in Naxalite ridden of, uh, areas of Hyderabad, I created an MI lesson plan and that was able to communicate the lesson in just two hours, something the teachers had allotted eight hours, the children actually got it in straight two hours, thanks to the plan. So I strongly believe that everyone is different and you have to give multifarious experiences to take the concepts forward. And you can see that in my working model too. Both uniqueness and interdependence is what I nurture. That also comes from Social, right? My being social. Okay. So here's a little glimpse about my life partner and myself. Is it love or hate? Hooray, we've survived it for 35 years. There is not a day that goes by when we say, How did we even make it? It's not a day that goes by when my daughter doesn't ask, How did you how do you guys even stick on with each other? You're so different from each other. Now, when I do the profiling, I kind of get it. But here are some cartoons which will help you understand how our life goes. So it's like, hey, let's cuddle, oh yeah, let's come close together. But then after a little while, it's like, hey, it's getting too hot, right? So you, you stay at your zone and I'll stay at my zone. 
that is something that is a very common happening here. The second uh, cartoon that you see here is, oh my God, there is a desire, there is a challenge, there is an adversity that's befallen us. And it's like, oh my God, there's a big hue and cry from my husband. And he goes running helter skelter to get solutions from everybody around. And I would have already sat down and worked on the solution. And by the time he returns, it's late. It's not just late, it's too late. It's over. That is how it works in, in, the, in terms of adversity. But when it comes to budgeting and says, hey, let me look at your budget. This is how my budget looks. So I've given 100 rupees for this food and 100 rupees, 50 rupees for utility. But for books, it's indefinite. So it's for learning. So then it's, it's like I have no clue how much I will actually spend on learning. And this is something that he always observes and always speaks about. So let's see the profiles now, which perhaps is also indicating similar things. Yes, I am still touching only the periphery. I'm hoping that by 2.0, I can, you know, even share better insights. But what I see here, he's a master of budget and my budgeting is always on my priorities. Okay. His equate is high and so is me. So we will remember what we said to each other. I am interactive and analytic, and he is high on analytic. My word, people, body, logic, and music is high. For him, word and music is high. I can be a little overwhelming for him as I seek many learning styles than him. So he, he feels I am doing a lot of things and doing many things, and he can't really understand. He's just in awe. He only smiles and he says, so, but then he, I know he feels very overwhelmed with it. Being an A1, A1 in all the lobes, he is influenced by family and is very conventional in his ways as opposed to me. When I was listening to Bhartika's insights, which are way deeper than I can even understand and, you know, stage before you today. But she did explain to me where a particular stubbornness comes from. But that is so clear in the way he has. So it's very, very conventional ways and very, um, you know, uh, based on what the family says, etc. giving a lot of importance to the family. So it is a little difficult. So I am a little more forthcoming and seeking new experiences. And he will be like, let's just do this. He's a tad stubborn and I have my life full. Now let us see where else it's coming from. Yeah, so I just spoke about this, right? The analytic and this one. So here you are. I would rather go straight into for the jugular and go into this. He is an ISTJ, right? He says, take your time and do it right. And for me, it is, and he is practical, factual, organized, logical, great problem solver. Um, he thinks it through. It's just that in the cartoon, I told him it's too late because I think about it a little fast. Maybe or just jump into action much faster. Maybe he thrives in careers that are heavy with facts, numbers, and data. He makes an excellent accountant. So true. And I actually underline this word very naughtily. Security guard. Yeah, very possessive about family. Takes very, very good care. And is always alert. Cannot sleep till everybody is back, um, you know, home. Has to keep tabs on where everybody is. So that is something very, very, uh, it's very endearing at times and a very uh, baffling at times. It depends on how the children take it. Either. So with an ESFJ as a wife, who puts others above self, it's a constant battle between the two. Here it says, it's an interesting and a happening life though, I'll say. That is that is what I'm able to see from. I am now going to get into, because it's one, I thought, let me also have a little bit of fun talking about my child and who is a better suited parent. I haven't got the fingerprints of my elder one. She is in Seattle and I'm really hoping that we kind of crack that problem for me um, and get it across here. But this is my younger daughter. And uh, this is uh, in one scene, I can explain to you what is their relationship. 
So she's like, oops, I think my nail is coming off. And you say, that's awesome. And it's not awesome. Are you even listening to me? Oh, I love you. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is there is this constant battle of not being understood. He says, he just can't get my point across. Amma, it's very difficult. You'll have to stay somewhere in between and actually articulate it between the two of us. I'm not able to get across to him. Now, this is something that happens very constantly. I wonder where that is coming from. And here is how the behavior is with norm. Okay, this is how Purna is essentially. When I think of her and I say, hey, mom, go along, go and talk to the adults. And I'll be like, please don't let me stay with you. Because that I do when I feel very overwhelmed by the adults around me. If I feel, um, oh my God, everybody is complaining too many things to handle, etc. I actually seek solace in her company. She works as a balm for me. She's simply within a minute, I will feel that I am centered. I don't know how it happens, but it happens. Her words induce positive change in me. And it doesn't even speak much. It is just one line and it will be bang on. Adverse to rules is the next cartoon, right? Hey, you can have one vitamin. Please, can I take two? No, 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 no. The rule is only one. Okay, you're done with one day of the rule. The next day, you have to say the same thing again. The rule will not be followed. There will be a lot of hula bula around it. But, and finally gets her way to, at least in this cartoon, the mother is still saying no. That happened till she was younger. It actually grew older. I stopped playing rules because I felt it was futile and I feel it's it doesn't really work. But my understanding of her is also so pronounced and so high that I feel she there is a lot of sense and the way she works and what she does. So now, and self is acts, right? When it is food time and I make something special for her, I love to go and tease her and take a morsel from her plate. Initially, she fusses, but the next minute, she actually gives in and she says, please have it too. So this is the kind of relationship that we have. Where is it coming from? So for me, you can see um, that she is so intense, right? We can make it out. And, and uh, with three double loops in my brain, okay, I have a daughter with extra double loops and two exes in hers. Now, it, it was quite complicated because uh, Bhartika has been reading out for me and uh, Dr. Ratna has also been doing it for me and I'm still grappling with understanding it this way, but I'm getting my, most of it also. You can see who balances out each other, mother and daughter, or is it father and daughter? So I think the mother and daughter make an indomitable pair. It is very visible in the, I, I don't know if it's for the best of both of us. For me, I feel it's for the best of me, but with her getting her way every time and me acting as a barrier, letting her be and de-stressing her, we do make an indomitable pair. So I instead of dwelling too deep into the left brain processing, right brain, which I thought I'll take on the next time, I thought we should just have a look at this and see even uh, if you look at it, the word smart is high, self smart is pretty um, high. And I will say her self smart is pretty high and her people smart is is a little okay while my people smart is way higher. So when it comes to relationships, I think I handle them way better than uh, she does. And interestingly, she has a very selective group, very, very clear group about what she has to do, what she has to say, and that is what she does. Her nature is kind of balances out like me, but if you look at the body, right? It's, it's, it is a little low. So getting her to move. And so for me, who is more kinesthetic, more moving out, etc. And for her who would like to stay indoors, it is a bit of a battle. And uh, striking a balance is very, very difficult. I, so I need to go indoors if I have to have conversations with her because she will not bunch or come outdoors. So these are the subtle uh, things that I'm able to see. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, as we go by, her emotional quotient is also quite high when mine is higher, but her spiritual quotient, her bigger view of life and her bigger view of uh, people and the universe, etc., is way higher. And that is something that I have always noticed about her. 
And uh, that, that is something uh, which I'm also seeing in this particular graph. So here is the disk profile. And once again, like last time, I'm zooming straight into the final reading. Here is an ESMJ as what can I do for you? And here is an INFJ, which is a capital to positive change. She is sensitive, creative, and quite intense, thrives on language and symbols. And she always has to see meaning in her career. So if she is determined to do something, she will definitely go for it. But nobody can influence her to go for anything. All that you can do is support. So the ones who are the most supportive and allow her to take her decisions are the ones whom she works with. And they are, they because they are very adept at reading people, they do best in art. So presently, she is a fashion designer. She's chosen arts for sure something that the entire family was averse to, but then it was her choice. And now she's a stylist because she understands people and she can style their clothes accordingly. So it is high-end men's apparel that she does. So which means even, you know, in, in an area which we don't think is very common is where she is. So she helps me and she stops me from going overboard when I think more for others than myself. She grounds me. This is um, what I have observed about my family. And this is this. Uh, so her uh, entrepreneurial suitability index is 72.1, which clearly so she is an independent worker. She will try and create her own little um, ways to do things. Great at managing stuff. Her management skills are way higher. So that is what she will be looking for. And that is what I need to recommend and perhaps appreciate. So being a very, very people's person, which you saw in my thing also, my quest for groups, because I always feel that sustaining motivation is by belonging to a tribe. It transforms a personal quest into a shared one. So I'm very choosy about the groups that I make because my identity is from the group that I live in. It, 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 this is this is a particular quote I've taken from Atomic Habits and which resonated so closely with me because instead of saying, hey, um, now I am a musician, I am a this one, it's like we are musicians, we are all rounded, that's what suits me better all the time. Very difficult for me to do things uh, all by myself. And if I'm in a group and if I am uh, involved in uh, group activities or if I'm doing something for somebody, that is when I work way beyond what I even perceived or began with. So that is something. So this is why remaining part of a group for achieving a goal is very, very important for me. It's friendship and community that comes up for me first. And it also is my identity. So sharing with you that I'm part of BNI and have been president and, uh, you know, it's a very giving platform for generating referrals. So it suits me fine. And I've been there for six years and Art of Living, of course, for over 20 years now. And uh, as a volunteer, as uh, uh, say work, as, you know, somebody who is... Um, uh, taken up free schools and do seva there, has adopted schools and keep working on a regular basis. That's how I associate with that. And now I'm hoping to get associated with Midna because it helps you understand, as I was discussing with Ratnaji, perhaps that uh, uh, even as a life coach, it might be coming intuitively, it might be coming from so many other learnings of yours, but if you have to be bang on, uh, there is a beautiful statement that comes to my mind. There is something called unconscious competence, which we all tap into, which could be coming from our subconscious, so many other aspects. But to be a coach, to be a teacher, we have to step down a little bit and build on conscious competence. It might be one step less, but it is something that will give you hits most of the time. So while serving people, I don't want to have misses. I want it to be a hit. And I've also been aspiring to look for a tool that is more holistic and all encompassing. So I am, of course, while studying this, I will also start finding like you know, because that is something my D2D3 will do for me. But having said that, this is one platform which has brought in so many tests and assessments together. 
And it seems to be giving me a very holistic picture. It'll appeal to the logical mind. It'll appeal to the believers. It'll appeal to the non-believers. And it's not something that we are just taking, you know, uh, from intuition alone. It's from readings and understanding readings. So thank you very much. I really hope I've maintained my time and I've not surpassed my time. And that's it from me. So, so thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jayasri. I think you did a fabulous uh, presentation. I would love to uh, hear from the uh, audience as well. Yeah, please, everyone, please go ahead, unmute and give your uh, inputs. I'll just call names so that there is uh, there are no confusions. Yeah, yeah, Tejvirji, please. Go. Namaskar ji. Namaskar. Uh, excellent uh, presentation. The, uh, I can't, uh, I'm still in presentation, like the way it has went on. And uh, in fact, my request uh, to the learner in you, who has become a master, to take up a session on MI especially. And we are keen to learn more and all the best. Thank, thank you. you so much. We'll do. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir, Bonaji. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Jayashree. Good evening. Uh, that was an excellent holistic presentation. It was a complete production. Uh, you. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Okay. So it was very well planned and very well scripted and very well executed. Wonderful production. You had a good sense of humor with a lot of uh, uh, cartoons and stories thrown in and at the appropriate uh, slayer moments also. Mm -hmm. yeah, in fact, your story about compassion uh, was uh, really inspiring. And um, you connected the GBP to your life very well too. So that was also, that's why I call it a perfect production. Because you had all the elements that is required for a good, interesting production. <laughs> Very good. Uh, you'll be a good asset to us. And I hope you continue with this tribe called the Midna tribe. Yes. I, I hope you have a long journey with us. And yeah. uh, I saw a lot of similarities and common interests and common background between you and me. And uh, I hope we get chance to interact, um, though I'm just about five years since I'm here and I'm glad that you're joining us and uh, hope we have a wonderful time together and I welcome you to Midna. Thank you, Buna. Thank you so much. And you're one of my pet divine uh, things also, right? Bhuvaneshwari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where the name comes from. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Haris, Haris, please go ahead. Very good afternoon. Hello, Kum. In your Pongal Nalwal Tikkal, I wish a very, very happy Pongal. Uh, actually, I'm driving back from Kolar back to Bangalore, and I'm listening to Jayashree Ma'am's uh, talk on the uh, in the car. Actually, this is not a surprise at all for me. Many of you might be awestruck and very, very happy listening to her. But for me, I am not surprised at all because I knew that this day would come when I wanted to see this day, uh, seeing her presentation, because I'm, I've been associated with her since past six months. I've been working with her in some small uh, uh, projects with her. Uh, I have no words to say that it, it was a wonderful presentation. I just want to say I'm, I'm very blessed to be associated with her. And uh, I'm very happy to introduce uh, Jayashree Ma'am to Midna. And we look forward for a lot of knowledge sharing and a lot of learning from her uh, in the course, uh, in the process uh, of this journey. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Jayashree Ma'am, and a very, very hearty congratulations to you. And I wish you all the best. And we'll, we look forward for more such thing in 2.0 and 3 also. <laughs> thank you. All the best.
Thank you. Thank you so much for introducing me to this. I love it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Harish. Yeah, Praveen, please go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, and uh, it was, uh, I want to give a very uh, big applause to you. And uh, you have really spoken your heart, that heart language with uh, multilingual skills and with the accelerated potential. And uh, you have skilled that master. And uh, in this era of the world, uh, the art of storytelling is missing. And you have presented very beautifully with uh, uh, a lot of uh, magical uh, displays of pictures, words, and uh, the pause and play and the soft tone. So whoever listened to your presentation will easily get the attention and uh, get the full knowledge about that. Uh, and it was a very, very, very great presentation, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Praveen. That was very deep and intense. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Yeah. Anyone else? I think Bhartika was there. Yes, sir. So thank you, Jashi, ma'am. Wonderful it's presentation. As I was going, I was knowing it is going to be uh, excellent, and it was. And there's nothing much to say. It's just like I am feeling like proud grandmother because Harish, I have, uh, he he also uh, got few months uh, with me, and we worked together for few months. And now with his reference, you have come. So it is like I'm a grandmother now. <laughs> so it was lovely experience to be with you and. Uh, all the very best for future in Midna. Thank you. A long way to go and you are holding me. So I know uh, it will get deeper and better from here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Bartika is a very specific, uh, uh, surprising uh, learner in Midna. I think uh, everyone who really wants to uh, learn uh, in a different way, I think Bartika is uh, one good mentor. I keep looking forward in the entire Midna family. Yeah, anyone else? Yeah, yeah. So that brings to the end of this session with some concluding remarks. I think uh, I'm really uh, have no words to uh, comment in this particular presentation because you surprised me, though I, I only can look into the reports, but the way you have connected the reports with your personal experience. I think it is beyond whatever I have said it in the counseling audio bite, whatever I have given you. I think you took the audio bite and uh, very well connected with your life experiences, starting from your childhood, where you learned physically, uh, you know, touch and feel was the primary, uh, you know, learning process that you had. And, and there on all that life stages that you have gone through. And uh, very, very, uh, you know, blessed uh, opportunities that you have got is uh, entering into the art of living and then it shaped you. And then you became a cultural ambassador. You traveled to Japan and even have personally, uh, you know, was very familiar with this Ikigai. I know uh, I, I happen to uh, hear this Ikigai only for the last uh, three to four years. I haven't read even the book that was meant for Ikigai. I don't know, somewhere uh, I felt when I have a practical tool, why do I don't we still, why do why should we still uh, worry about the, uh, what you can say, the theory part of it. So I refuse to read the book. Uh, maybe if I go to Japan, I will be more uh, happy to read the book and then connect with the people there. So I think uh, in terms of, uh, life coaching experience and the tools that you have used in your career so far 34 years or 35 years of teaching and all combined human uh, co uh, human beings uh, coaches uh, for the human beings i think uh, your experiences being a sensory learner everything practically learned is much much powerful than people just abstractly have ideas and uh, out of 10 ideas they take only one idea but in case, because you are a, a, a sensory learner, you take one idea and make it 360 degree comprehensively very powerful. I think this is the power of uh, process-centric people because uh, they don't try too many things, but whatever area they take, they just ensure uh, that they are comprehensively connecting with all that fields that are related to that activity that they are doing. And uh, I have heard and seen your activities that you do in 
in uh, uh, outdoor locations, temples and the kind of uh, campuses and you do a lot of physically, literally workshops. I think the difference between a sensory learner and the intuitive learner is intuitive learner becomes only an advisor and a guide and a mentor. They don't get into the nitty gritties of the practical uh, experiences. But whereas in the sensory learner, though their quantum of learning might come with a lot of uh, efforts and experiences, but I think their in-depth is uh, unsurpassable. I don't think anybody can claim that they have that in-depth uh, you know, experience of whatever they are speaking about. Many people, without uh, getting into the water, they can talk about swimming for two hours. <laughs> yes. But for a sensory learner, it might take two days to learn swimming, but uh, uh, their experience is much beyond uh, you know, anybody else who would just talk about the theory. So sensory learners go more with the uh, experiential learning. That means they have to just uh, do it and then that experience is making them very powerful. I think that's where uh, you have been a master. I must say, and like Tejvir Singh said, we are all talking with only one side of the report, which is the data. As far as the multiple intelligence is concerned, I would be so happy to learn from you how to design a multiple intelligence class and a workshop so that everybody who is having the report can do a little bit of MI workshops that can help children. I, I agree with you 100% that eight hours of learning, if you use the right MI, it can happen in two hours. I think we can make so much time available for the children to have fun after learning. Most of the parents are stressed because without learning, they are make, uh, looking for fun. But I think if we can reduce the time that they take to learn a subject or any, uh, any concept, I think their six hours will definitely get saved. And now, they, now it is available for them to do any weird experiments and anything that yes. they want to do in life as well. So I think... Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm so much uh, uh, looking forward with your uh, interaction, and is, you are still to commit that you are coming to Coimbatore or not? Yes, yes, I, yeah, I am coming. I'm coming to, to uh, today. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. That's a today. that's a great news because you did not, uh, you know, confirm that. I just uh, kept one room open. No, Actually, no. I have kept one one room open for you, and I'll wait till the last minute. Uh, uh, I'm I'm definitely I'm, 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 I'm coming. Uh, yeah, please, please do come because, oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's a great opportunity for the family members to know you so that we can think of some collaborative uh, workshops that you do for one or two times and so that we can learn and replicate it at a smaller level with kids. Because without multiple intelligences, intelligence, learning can never be made very interesting for children to just spend a lot of time with it. So I think uh, it's very important and that too, with the current children coming so much with their frontal lobes, small x on both the sides of it, I think they don't have the patience also to sit and go through it for hours. So they are all looking for shortcuts, jomatos and swiggies only they are interested in. I think multiple intelligence will be a great uh, shortcut for children to get the crux of the subject that they want to learn. And if the concept is understood, practical learning can happen uh, you know, in the later part of their life when they get into their careers and all. So uh, I'm so delighted. Just before uh, concluding the remarks, which I usually do, uh, I think uh, though you are uh, MBTA says ESFP, but I think you are EST, uh, TS, ES, uh, uh, P. Actually, it is not uh, F, it is P. Okay, no, no, sorry. You are, this thing is ESFJ. Correct. Because, yeah, because you have a small X on the left frontal, you are actually ESFP also. Okay. That is where your entrepreneurial skills are getting uh, enhanced. Mm -hmm. Because when there is a, yeah, when the small X gets triggered, your entrepreneur qualities gets enhanced and the compassion and the leadership skills are actually getting enhanced. So what you lose in your uh, husband's competition that the compliance, which is actually your compliance is not predictable. Your compliance is unpredictable, predictable. That is why when it comes to books, you don't know how much money you are spending. So you are very uh, selectively compliance, whereas your husband is very uh, uh, concrete uh, compliance is there. It, it's like nothing doing. This is very important kind of thing. And that is where 
that small x is triggering and it is behaving like a right prefrontal which is diagonally opposite okay. and that is what is enhancing your even the cartoons and the pictorials and the presentations it is enhancing it so it is not the direct visual that you are getting an advantage you are getting an indirect visual stimulation that comes from the right prefrontal contributed by the small x and the left frontal so i i though your report appears to be esfj for a uh, for a, a psychometric test in genetic brain profiling with genetic brain profiling we say you are a cusp of esfj and esfp both together okay that's how uh, that's how the you have to see uh, that small x playing around and when it comes to your daughter <clears throat> yes it is uh, a little more complex uh, quadratic equation and it will definitely need even i wanted uh, to discuss with her uh, in a session so that uh, she will definitely understand the report much easier because she has a small x on the uh, right frontal okay you have experienced it already so for you connecting is much easier she is still uh, younger in age so it will be very easy for her to connect with her inquisitiveness and then that is connecting towards the uh, you know the report that will be a better uh, you know thought process that we can look forward so i we will find some time and uh, that is very comfortable for her also to join and uh, maybe after pongal we'll uh, find out a time and i'll i'll connect with you on zoom i wish to be with uh, you and your daughter along with vartika and uh, let us uh, see how much we can understand but i'll tell you it's a it's a mahabharata uh, yes. story okay yes. <laughs> so much of intricacies and small stories are to be connected i think she will be the best one to reveal over a period of time with the life uh, when the life throws challenges her true uh, responding style will come out and that's going to be the ultimate uh, validation of the report as well so i once again thank uh, you for getting it as a self discovery in spite of your busy schedules i think uh, you have done a great job and uh, look forward uh, next week in coimbatore and then you can go back i am sure within another 3 to 4 months you will do your self discovery 2.0 because you are already a teacher in uh, genetic brain profiling it is just that you are uh, you know you are just getting some data to show that understanding that process person i don't mind i i like it only this way so it's okay yeah, right yeah yeah i can't okay. so, even if i feel i'm eligible for that i don't like bypassing steps uh, yeah yeah that i understand that i understand yeah yeah because there nice are so many nuances you could miss out yes so, that's yeah. true that's true right. that is why that is why when i when i suggested uh, vartika to you the idea was she is little goal centric and you are little process centric so obviously uh, there can be lot of uh, transformation that could happen when you are not on the similar side yes. okay if you meet somebody who is similar to you then the learning will not really happen uh, holistically only one side only you will both of you will continue to discuss and because uh, vartika's prefrontals are stronger than the frontal and you are vice versa i think a great combination and the similarity for both of you is her left frontal is not very strong your left frontal is strong but not predictable so i think that's the magic that makes you connect very well i think uh, you can continue to be with her for your self discovery 2.0 as well and i think uh, uh, with that i end uh, today's session with a lot of happiness having seen you i when you when you were connected to me i had my apprehensions about well will you find time to come in and give this session or not you attended uh, the spark sessions you also you know went through everything religiously and i'm so happy to have you amongst us a great mentor in the making with genetic brain profiling and a life coach with genetic brain profiling is a winning combination by all means there is no other there is no other thing that you can add on to your toolkit once you got your gbp uh, you know in your bag i think that's the blessing that you have, we are all having so thank you once again for giving this session you made my day thank you jay sri See yes. you at Coimbatore on twenty fifth. Yeah, please. Oh, happy Bogi, happy Shankranti, burning up a lot of the old habits and emerging new. Thank you. Right. Thank you so.